Test, test. Is my audio working? Let's see. Sounds like it might be. Cool, it's working. <laughs> well, I'm just giving all this a test now. Oh god, Bosworth, you're in here. I don't know if you're going to enjoy this content, it's just fishing stuff. So I'm just testing this, because I just got it all set up. And I have the camera working, it's like, you should see the setup, it's like propped up on some boxes. I need, I need an actual uh, tripod in here. So to be careful not to move it, not to glance up at the stream every so often. But it's working. That's good. I uh, I haven't streamed for a while. I used to stream video games and stuff, but it's been a while for, since then. So all I'm doing is I'm going to tie up some brassies, is the flies they're called. How are you doing tonight, Brian? How's it, how does this look? You can kind of see it. The lighting's not the best. Should talk to Minor B about all this. Cause he's the one who got me into this stuff. Oh man. So I'm gonna try two different brassies, one of which is gonna be the segmented ones, which I've already done. And then uh the regular ones, non-segmented. Non-segmented ones, which are like the standard. And we'll see how it works. Um using just black thread. And I have this, I don't really know what gauge this is. It's actually, well, no, with this hook it'll be good, but for my smaller hooks, I got little tiny hooks, and they're not, uh, it's not that great. But I love tying brassies, they're super easy and, and pretty fun. And uh, I think I already messed it up, but we'll, uh, you only know, talked to him about goat cheese. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll go from here and see. Actually, no, this will work. I'll just kind of make a thread base when I didn't need to. Come on. I need a, I need a, a tripod, and I need a um, better light. My light right now is like over here, and it's I, I know my hand's blocking it. You ever fish in Oregon? I do. My last video is actually in Oregon. It was a lake, a lake up in Oregon last summer. It's hard for me to justify spending the uh, the out of state uh, money for like salmon to steal it because it's like a lot extra. But I do want to. But yeah, I buy just the regular license. I actually, um, one of my buddies has a beach house on the Oregon coast, so I go down there and fish and clam for uh, for rockfish down there all the time. Not uh, and, and perch, not that I'm terribly successful. But uh, it's fun to try. I caught a nice ling cod last year. That was kind of, that was my claim to fame on the coast. I'm making these for a trout trip that I'm doing in March. I'm going to try them out here, like on some local lakes before that, but uh, I'm going out with a coworker to some west side, or sorry, east side lakes in March that I'm really excited about. Heavy fly fishing. I don't think I put enough wire on here. It's going to be close. Yeah, you need a fishing license to fish like anywhere over here. I don't think it's the case for all states, but yeah, over here you need a Washington fishing license and you need an Oregon fishing license and basically a different fishing license for each place you want to fish. And it's expensive. It's like for a year to get an Oregon license like out of state if I wanted to fish for like anything, I think it would cost me like 150 bucks or something crazy like that. Even in state, like Washington's, is still like seventy or eighty. So, yeah. Oh, you know what? I think that's a, that's gonna be enough. So I'm just gonna tie this in place.
And these are super simple. Super simple flies. That's kind of why I like tying them. I'll show you some other ones I have. But we're using, so we just literally, I think it's just three materials. There's the thread, the hook. I guess the hook doesn't really count. And then this copper wire. And then a peacock hurl. Oh, it's all reversed. Which is basically just the little frillies on a, uh, on a peacock feather. Cinch that in there. Pull off the excess. Yours are like $10. You don't have, like, we have a lot of money that goes into the fisheries here, like, like salmon uh, habitat recovery, salmon hatcheries, steelhead uh, recovery, a lot of different environmental um, programs that the licenses help pay for. I don't think you guys have as much over there. I mean, you, you probably do. I just, I'm not familiar with them. Because the salmon and steelhead are kind of in not a good spot lately, so. Yeah. This peacock roll is really kind of thin. It's a weird, it's a weird proportion brassy. All right, but that's number one, pretty much. Got a whip finish that. A whip finish being this fancy little tool that you can use to Oh god, I just lost it. It all just came undone. What did you do? No. Oh, crap. 90 bucks. Yeah, Oregon combined. Wait, are you... Oh, you're hunting and fishing. Okay. Yeah, I'm assuming you live in Oregon. In Oregon and you live there, it's not as bad. I'm going to try to rescue this one. This one, like, completely unfurled. As you can see, it's it's a mess right now. Yeah, 90 bucks is about what I pay for the year in Washington, and that's kind of like everything. I think the only thing I didn't get this year was the new halibut uh, endorsement, because I never go halibut fishing, and then I don't get the Puget Sound crabbing uh, one either, because I don't go to the Puget Sound very often. Oh my gosh. This is a really bad one the first one I do and it's turning out terrible. It's okay. Honestly, like, I don't think the fish will care. Okay, now let's try to whip finish. Pretty bad at whip finishing. Oh, I just pulled it out again. Okay, this one's a lost cause. Restarting. Do I ever fish the ocean? I fished off the coast, like off of the jetty. Let me show you some of my successful ones. I feel bad about that one. So my smaller successful ones look like this. But um, no, I don't have a boat, so I can't like go out into the into the ocean. Got that guy. Things like set to focus. So that's what it's supposed to look like when it doesn't fall apart. I'm gonna try again. I feel bad. I actually have a bunch of flies. These are all the flies I've tied in the last couple weeks. Learning, tying, and learning, or getting ready for the trip in in uh, in March. I have a long ways to go. I got a lot, a lot more flies to tie. What's the point of the fuzzy part? That is. Wait, the point of the fuzzy part? Oh, it, it emulates different types of bugs. So in this case, it emulates like the, uh, what would that be, the thorax? So there's the head, which is the tiny little black part at the, uh, it's basically just the thread that's wrapped around. I don't know if you'll be able to see so much, but there's the head that's like a tiny little black piece right behind the eye of the hook. And then that floofy part which kind of emulates the the thorax right behind it, and then this is would be like the uh, abdomen. The bugs these are like a larva um, emulator, a larva imitation. 
So there's all sorts of different flies like in different life stages as you can see there's like the the larva uh, like these ones are larva too and then there's the pupa which kind of if I can it's, everything's reversed the pupa which are like emerging and there's actually like some fuzz on there and then there's um, I don't have any emergers they almost look like uh, actually yeah here's kind of an emerger basically like a little a fly that's almost just has some some wispy wispy pieces coming out and then there's the the full like the dry fly imitation which is like the actual bug that's you know fully grown or whatever some serious business there's so many so many different uh flies that you can tie it's crazy okay i'm gonna try this one more time i'm gonna do the segmented one i think because i like that one better i'm gonna blame that on why i messed up that last one actually i know why i messed up the last one it's because i didn't tie in the the peacock roll good enough the hook out of here okay what vice are you using this is oh man i knew it it's a hmh api um i actually got my entire starter set from a craigslist post like some i think some lady's husband like older lady's husband had died recently and so she had a bunch of his fishing gear and a bunch of his fly tying gear that she was just getting rid of. And um, I got really lucky, honestly. It was a really good deal. I think this vice normally is like 70 or 80 bucks. Um, it's got like the full spinniness, which is really nice. And it has, um, you can put different size vices in the tip. And it's pretty good in general. Like it's not like fancy or new there's not too much new technology in it, but it's a, a pretty solid beginner vice. With that said, I mean, if you go down to, like, Sportsman's or anywhere, any sporting goods store, there's, like, beginner kits for tying, and they come with, like, a vice. They come with, like, a set of basic tools like bobbins and scissors and stuff, and it's, like, a great way to um, to get started. And those are only, like, 50 to 60 bucks for, like, the whole kit. I was basically, I just kind of, my coworker was really into fly tying and fly fishing, or is really into fly tying and fly fishing, so I kind of just, like, haunted Craigslist for months and months until a good deal came up and I jumped on it real quick. Um, so if you are not in a rush, that's what I would recommend. Okay, so this one, I am doing a different way. I'm tying just the copper into the front instead of last time I tied it in the back and then wrapped it up. This time I'm tying it in the front, I'm gonna wrap it down and then back up and you'll see. It's actually, this is what I'm used to. I did the other like five or six on. So wrapping it down, tight wraps, going down. So they're right up against each other. It actually came with another vise that was one that latches to the desk like it just clamps to the side or the desktop it's a little bit smaller i think it's kind of more of a to-go kit like there's a lot of people who make to-go boxes for their flies so they can tie flies while out on the trip and whatnot and this one's more just it has its own base and it's it's a kind of freestanding so tie it all the way down until just uh, just as it's starting to bend touching touching turns say right about there and I'm gonna start coming back up loose turns now to make that segmented look and this is the one I'm much more comfortable with doing so you can see kind of the the loose turns gives a good illusion that there's a uh, segments wrap that around a couple times Helicopter this off. Do I get seasick? Seems like a good rotating one. Yeah. The rotating is super nice. I actually didn't really know like what I had until I showed it to my coworker. I just said I just saw oh yeah a kit that has a bunch of fly tying stuff, and uh, jumped on it. He's like oh yeah it's a good one. The rotating is good and all that fun stuff. Um, 
Do I get seasick? Uh, not really. I used to, when I was a kid, I got seasick. But, um, I really haven't gotten seasick when I got older. But again, I don't really go on the ocean that often. And when we do go out in the ocean, I go in smaller boats. I'm actually going to use two peacock rolls this time. Um, so we make sure the conditions aren't crazy. What's the brand and model? It was HMH API. So HMH, I think, is the brand, and then API is like the model? I don't know. Okay, so this time I'm going to tie in these peacock rolls a little bit better at the end. I actually have a lot of space. I should have kept this a lot closer to the eye, but that's why I kind of wanted to do two of these peacock rolls instead of one. And what I'm going to do is I'm taking both of these, and I'm going to clamp them in my... Uh, hackle pliers these guys and I think what I want to do is just this is kind of me experimenting get both of them in there and I'm gonna twist them a little bit see if this looks good so now they're kind of twisted so that a they're kind of enforcing each other and I just pulled them out <laughs> so that's the problem with peacock rolls is they're incredibly um, fragile so I just literally just pull them out. So I'm going to not do that. I'm going to retie them in here. Unfortunately, with a lot of these materials, like the feathers and whatnot, you have to be really gentle. So now I'm just going to kind of hold them together. Oh my god, what is going on with this tying? It's just not staying tied in. I swear, I don't normally have this much trouble. I am learning, but this is worse than normal. Yes. Like I said, it was an older lady, and I think her husband um, passed away, and this was sitting in her garage for years and years. So, yeah, that's what I was finding, too. This vice is very old. But... Like many things in life, they all, they made the, the quality stuff back in the day, and you know nowadays they, they make the cheap stuff, so I feel like I still got a good deal. Super gentle. Just going to get it right up to the eye. Like that. This is much more successful. out give it a couple more wraps just to make sure it's all nice and snug and then we'll do our whip finish haha -ha, success some equipment 250 I was not I was not seeing that, but that's that's good. I like it. <laughs> We're probably distracting you. Well, if I didn't want distractions, I wouldn't be streaming. Boom. That is a brassy right there. It's not actually turned out good. So now you can kind of see oh my gosh. The uh the head, which is that kind of just the thread wrap, but it makes it look like a little black head, and then that thorax looking thing and then the brass on the end and the segmented looks actually I didn't tighten that as close as I thought but the segmented makes it look like the body of a bug so that's your bug emulator or uh, look alike or I can't think of that word imitation I got it alright so I want to do a different one now Actually, I've been using this little, there's plastic stuff, it's called like D-rib, V-rib, vinyl rib, but it's really fun to work with, and I'm going to make a coronamid pattern, which is what we're mainly going to be using, and uh, and those brassies, yeah, those are like super basic, super um, common, everyone uses them, they're basic, they're one of the flies where it's like, what fly should I make, is it j just a generic fly I have in my box, and a lot of times you'll see that brassy on there. But this time I'm going to use a bead head 
And I'm going to use a white one. Which I have in my box of goodies. That's the wrong box. This box of goodies. That's the wrong box too. Where the hell is the right box? Got it. Okay, so we got this, these guys, which are bead heads, which emulate uh, the head of a bug. Or sometimes, I guess, uh, my coworker Miner B was telling me they, these bugs will, when they're on the bottom, like they'll hatch and then they'll grow as pupa, and then when they need to emerge, they'll actually grab onto air bubbles that are floating up from the bottom, and so they'll they'll be latched onto a little air bubble, and this can emulate that little air bubble, which I thought was really neat. So. We need to, it's two steps here. Put that bead on. Put it in the clamp. The clamp! Ha ha! And then, um, let me tighten this. And then we need to push this back and we need to make the gills, which are actually a special material. One downside of this is that you have so many materials. There's like just like this whole box. I got like 12 boxes of fur and thread and all sorts of stuff. Fur, thread, feathers, hooks, weights, weird things that I'd never seen before I started this hobby. But this material, I'll show you how it goes, but this is going to emulate the bug's gills. And I actually really like how this looks. Uh, where is these guys? So, what do I want to do? Let's make some red ones. So the really cool part about this V-rib or vinyl ribbing is that it takes on the color of the thread you put below it. I have red vinyl ribbing, but I like to I like to do this. You should sell them on Amazon and profit. So what the flies or the vice? Eh, I was thinking about it. I'm not that fast or that good yet, so I'd have to work at it a little bit and like actually catch some fish with them. I've done a lot of tying and not a lot of catching with them, so I need to work on that aspect. Okay, so now we're starting out at the front here, just getting a little base up to about there. And what we need to do is tie in the gills, which is that little tuft of white. So that goes out. Oh, wow, I cut too much. That's fine. In front of the in front of the eye and it wraps back a little bit. And then we cut off this stuff on the back, like in the back of the hook right here. Cuz it's going to get covered. I need new scissors. These scissors suck. These old janky scissors work infinitely better than these fancy looking ones. I don't know why, but these are just like way better. And I always like to think that the fancy looking ones work better, but it's just not the case at all. These rusted ass ones look work way better. So now we got this. These are the, going to be the gills. We're going to cut them short, but now we can move the bead up over the thread. Hopefully I didn't, I might put too much thread on there. Nope, we're good. Oh, right. And we need to uh, actually whip finish this. So the only downside to tying this one is you have to whip finish it twice. <laughs> Get out of there. What are you doing? Just 
that. Cut that thread off. Now move the bead up. Almost too much. It'll be fine. Is it still focused? Okay. And now we need to make the body. So we gotta retie what we just did and move it back down. This fly or coronamid, it's a larva Im or a imitation, and it's always curved. So we wanna get it far down there. I might actually need to move this real quick. Just move it up a little bit. Perfect. Cut this excess off. Then we get our cool V rib material. Oof, it's a terrible squeak. Oh my god, stop squeaking. Tie it in at the bottom. Alright, we you tie it up the whole way so the body is even. You don't want it to be like fat down below and thin at the top. You want it to be kind of even or, or tapering as you go up. So let's put that in there. Get it uh, laid flat. Get it wrapped once. I usually use a wrap it once. I'll put it on top like that. Kind of use the uh, gravity of it like that. Set it on top. She didn't work. Loosely wrap it a little bit. Then pull it on top. Then continue. It's a process here. Wrap it up a little more. Pull it so it's on top. That should be good now. We got this excess. I want to basically tie it all the way up to the ver to the bead, and then cut that excess off. nice now we take the this is the fun part take this v-rib and hold it tight and pull it oh this is a weird one it got tangled but pull it with those tight turns keeping it really tight as you go up the fly and it gives it that nice translucent bumpy like looks like a buggy looking effect. All the way up to the top here. Boom. Give it a couple wraps to tie it down or snug it down. Cut the excess. You can probably do, do another fly with this. You got enough excess. Wrap it in so it's all nice and flush. That bead. Wit finish it. What is up, Northwest Open Season? Sorry, I'm like looking at the fly, so I might be a little slow on the chat. Stop it with the weird. Six wraps there. Get that gill out of it. Kind of turned out with a pretty big head and it's kind of lumpy. Not ideal, but it'll work. And then to finalize it, we take this gill material, cut it till it's about the size of the bead, I guess, is, is the the uh, rule of thumb there and now we have this little larva looking it's, it's called a coronamid I don't know if you could tell but that 
yeah, you can tell that sheen on the V-rib material kind of gives it that extra buggy look. And it's not supposed to be this lumpy, admittedly. Let's try another one. I'll try to remove the lumps. One more time. I think what part of the problem is that this thread is like really thick. So even if I wrap it a couple times, it actually adds a lot of bulk to it. I wonder if I have a thinner red or a different color that we can use. Oh yeah, put it over here. I have a assortment. All the well, not all these threads. A lot of these threads came with the kit, like. But I bought. I did buy some of them. <laughs> Uh, what color do I want to use? You know what I haven't made yet? I have not made a yellow one yet. And there are some, like, the natural colors. There are some yellows that I saw. So I'm going to use yellow, yellow and see how it turns out. It'll be a fun experiment. Maybe it'll turn out great. Maybe it'll be terrible. We'll see. Here's my rubber band. Try to keep stuff organized, at least a little bit. Get my bobbin loaded with the yellow. So some of this thread, I haven't used this. Some of this thread, since it's so all this kit was so old, it's like brittle. So I'll have to be careful because it might just snap if I give it any sort of pressure. Because who I don't even know how old this thread is. There's like I'll show you some boxes of stuff that I got, but it's like, it's from a long time ago, for sure. Like, for example, check, check this out. So, like, all the hooks I got were literally, all of them were in boxes like this, these old Mustad boxes. I'm not 100% sure how old these are, but, like, nowadays, the, the way that they're packaged is, uh, or, like, these old plastic packages... But nowadays they're all they're all packaged in like you know plastic flat things like this or um, you know little baggies with magnets in them. So like I don't even know how old these hooks are, but everything's that old. It was crazy. It was like I was like going. It was like a kid at a candy store. I was going through everything. It was good times. <laughs> and then like all the all the fur and all the feathers are that old too. So like yeah, I've had to be careful with those. Uh, okay, so yeah. Coronamid, yellow coronamid, let's do it. We're going to use that cool V rib material, and hopefully the yellow will show through really nice. I'm going to use a silver bead head. These guys, I think it's the right size. Eh, they're a little small. We'll, we'll, we'll run with it. How much are we getting these ones? Oh, yeah, these, okay, it was the same size as the other ones, and it worked fine, so. Really good. Okay. I have smaller hooks, but I kind of want to make these nice, bigger coronamids. Vice it in there. Perfect. So, again, I just stabbed myself. That hurt. Bleeding. Injured. It's okay. If you're fishing and you don't stab yourself occasionally, then you gotta try harder. Or just be dumb like me, I don't know. <laughs> okay. So last time I put way too much of this um gill material, so I'm going to tone it back a little bit. Because you don't really need that much. I'm, I'm doing this the wrong way. I'm be doing this this way. My hand's like, what are you doing? This doesn't make sense. Much better. I'm going to tie it loosely, pull it up to make sure it's on top of the hook shank, and then tight, tighten it down a little bit. A little more wispy, but it should be fine. Wrap 
this back just a little bit before whip finishing. Trimming. Sliding that bead forward. Putting this back on. Rewrapping. Perfect. Now, let me cut this. Should bury the point in the bite. Yeah, so the problem with this, okay, two problems. Um, this is meant, like, this particular vice point, I think, is meant for jigs or bigger um, flies. It came with a smaller one. Can't, oh, that's not it. There you go. Ah. So it came with this tiny little one. You can see how much smaller it is compared to the one I'm using. That I think was meant for small ones. And I honestly have not figured out how to take this one off. I mean, I think I could probably look or ask someone, but I haven't yet. So I've been kind of like monkeying around with this big vice or big tip, which... Eh, it works for the most part, but yeah, I need to watch my hook. And I don't like um, putting that hook point in because a lot of times you need to, uh, I like at least with these flies, you need to get all the way down to the, the bend. And if the hook point's in there, the bend's like far back and it's hard to get the, the thread around there. Uh, what is I doing? Oh, yeah. Oh, Jesus, why are you squeaking? Get some V rib material. Boom. I'm gonna try to do this a little more elegantly. The clamp ends remind me of old school Dremel heads. What did it, how did old school Dremel look different than new school Dremel? So I'm going to do a couple loose wraps, make sure this is on top, and I think my, one of my problems is I didn't do any tight wraps down here, so it actually slid down. So this is working really well now. It doesn't really matter if it slides along the side a little bit, as long as it's along the same side the whole way down, because you want that body to be even. Right up against that bead, cut the excess, wrap it up nice. Now we're gonna take take that ribbing from the bottom to the top. I guess my coworker uh, was saying that this ribbing stuff will get torn up by the fish's teeth quicker than just, you know, the regular coronamids will you often use just thread or even just like wire and thread. But I just, I love how this looks, so I want to try it. Like some of my favorite looking flies just have this cool V-rib material. And I really like it. And if it catches me at least one fish, I'll be happy. So be it if it catches a fish and then breaks. It's done its job. It's earned its place. Okay. Getting that snug. Cut it in there. With the tension screw, you just loosen it and slide it out. Okay, where's the tension screw? Like, which part of it's the tension part? So I was looking, and there's like, there's different, down here, I'll show it, actually I can lift it up. It's down here, there's like a bunch of different, um, like, screws to tighten the vise itself. Or is this itself? Cause, but then, I, like, if I look at this, there's no screws on the tip itself, so. Oh, you know what, there's, it's threaded on the inside. 
So maybe that's it. I don't know. I need to investigate. I actually don't have any decent tools for it either, but whatever. Well, I, I'll, I need to look into it. If you know exactly where the tensioner screw is, though, let me know, because I would love to switch this thing out. Whip finish five or six times. Pull that bow tight. This one turned out a lot better. It's a little bulky on the right near the head, but I think that's fine because it's pretty much part of the head. And then we just cut off. Boom. I guess it's kind of long still. I can just shape it a little bit. Boom. All right, I can cut this off now. That one looks a little more how you'd like it. Let me get it next. I need to. Uh... drawer is uh loosen the collar by the spring this is not there's no uh collar here this the spring is just to hold material this is all one solid tube down to the base itself right here it's like this is a solid tube down here and then down here there's a bunch of different screws to mess with twist open at the collar and head slides out maybe i'll have to look but yeah boom the focus is way back here. I have a manual focus, and it's on this thing. Kind of. Not really. I don't know if I like that yellow color. Doesn't look too bad. I wonder if I can, like, zoom it better. I have some tools here. Oh, man. Look at that. I don't know how high quality this camera is. Is it focused, though? Ooh, oh. Oh, it's a real stepped focus. <laughs> the best focus is uh, passable at best, I guess. It's that one right there. For this, for this particular, what would that be? Z-axis for you guys. Y axis, X. yeah, Z axis, yeah. I like it. I think it. I think yellow looks good. And I love. I still love that this material because that uh, that D or V rib is 100% clear. So all the color it's getting is just straight from the thread. It actually looks kind of marbled under there. Like you can see, it's kind of darker in some places than others. I think that looks good because bugs aren't all the same color on the inside. Okay, um, let's go back to the to the brassy now that I uh, feel a little more confident <laughs> um, or maybe we can poke at this so like what I was seeing is in here there is a thread what I'm worried about is that the thread in here since it just sat around for so long oh my gosh what is going on did this just work for me dude are you are you, are you kidding me right now I literally messed with this thing not exaggerating for like an hour and a half like a couple weeks ago and I could not figure out how to do it. I just accidentally opened it. <laughs> like I'm not kidding. I literally was messing with this thing. I was like unscrewing all these down here, like trying to unscrew it all the way, trying to unscrew this one, trying to do it like, oh, maybe they need to be all the way up. Maybe they need to be all the way down. Maybe they need to be separate. Not exaggerate. I was like Googling it. And I was like, how do again, it's, the vice is so old that you know, there's some, like, old guides you can find, but it wasn't anything solid. Oh, my God, yeah. Okay, I see what's going on. So, it's actually, yeah. Uh, oh, my gosh, this is so nice. So, yeah, this whole rod in here, actually, if you're ever curious, this this rod that goes all the way through is, is what has the threads that are on the inside of this tube. So, when I screw this in, it, it's actually um, pulling the threads from the... Uh, from the back of this, from the uh, little little lever part. Okay, cool. 
I'm glad that we discovered something. I just gotta make sure it works. Okay, so let's pull this all the way back. Oh man, this is gonna make things that's gonna make things so much so much nicer. It's actually how you catch your first steelhead too. It's <laughs> trying this for hours and hours. Yeah, no joke, man. When I caught my first steelhead last year, last season, it was just like that. I'm like, oh, I'm on the river, and it get, it gets numb. Like you just kind of get numb. You're like, yeah, you know, I think this is what I do. And then you just you're just casting over and over and over and over again. And all of a sudden, just that one cat. Even though you're doing the same exact thing, that one cast, there's just a steelhead that moved in. Boom, fish on. I remember that distinctly. It was good times. You get numb to it, especially when you don't catch that many fish, or at least not that many steelhead. Okay, now I'm going to do small brassy. I like the small one. We're going to go with, since we got the small vice, we're going to go with a small hook and celebrate. This is a, this is in celebration. And you can see, the, so the last hooks I was using were size 10, and these are size 14. You can see the difference. It's considerably, considerably smaller. I haven't tied anything smaller than a 14. There's some. I have some tiny, tiny hooks, and I, I don't even know how people tie on them. Honestly, they're so small. Oh my gosh! I gotta rejigger this. So much room for activities. Okay. Is this focused? Is that too much zoom? Maybe I can zoom out a little bit. Eh, it's not bad. It's fine. Okay. Okay. Brassy time. Let's do it. So tie in just to the top there. Now we need to get our copper wire. Spool. Aquatic students. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good luck with the deploy, Brian. Don't break anything. Oh, I'm not on call, so you can break whatever you want, honestly. <laughs> I think Sean's on call. Or no, is Sean? I don't know. Yeah, no, in my my local... I haven't actually been able to get out too much between the rivers being blown out and me being busy and working and whatnot. I haven't got too many opportunities to fish in the last week or two. But, um... People are catching them. I see a lot of pictures on, on Facebook and all that fun stuff. They exist. They're just... They, like you said, they're just unicorns. Okay. Wrap this bad boy down. Tight turn, tight touching turns. down to the bend. That's probably good. Now let's go back up. They make these cool little bobbin holders that sit off to the side. I need to get one of those. The bobbin gets in the way. out of here. Nice. I didn't know it was duck season still. I've never... I've gone duck hunting once unsuccessfully. 
I'm not much of a hunter. I would do it. I think it's just... I have so much invested in fishing, it's hard for me to justify investing more in something else. Man, I really need... There's Like, I watch f people tie flies. Like, they make videos, and, like, their quality is so good. And this is just kind of blurry. Yeah. You can see my shirt. Look how nice my shirt is. Yeah. You can see Doom Guy. Boom. Doom Guy. Killing some demons. Nope. I messed it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's just no winning here. I guess that's the closest. Like slide it, like maybe there's a fuzzier, kind of fuzzier. Any lighting is it? No. I guess it's just gonna be fuzzy. Need like one of those fifteen hundred dollar cameras, I think. Till then, I'm SOL. Okay, peacock curl time. I think I could just use this guy. Look how fluffy this one is. I'm glad that the stream works. A lot of times the first night when you're working on these stupid s new streaming things, it's uh 90% wrestling with the software. This one, looks, this one turned out really nice, actually. I'm digging it. Feeling good about this one. She got some peacock curl that's like bronzy. Like there's some that's green and then there's some that's like this nice bronze brown color. And I got some a nice brown one this time. Let's look at that. Let's see if I can get that. Oh god. I did it too tight. Open. Oh, hackle pliers. I do have hackle pliers. If there's enough of that peacock curl, I usually don't bother. But if I'm getting really low, like if I'm wrapping it really low, then yeah. I use that. I need to take some pictures with my phone and I'll put them on Instagram. Because the webcam really doesn't do it justice. It looks really good. Yeah, this one's probably one of my favorites already. I really dig that one. Come on, get out of there. What is going on? Oh, it's like magnetized. Boom. Okay, what's next? Um, let's do another one. I need to practice. Actually, you know what? No, let's do something different. Let's do... Let's do a thread-based wire coronamid. But let's choose... Oh, man. Good luck, man. Have a good one. Thanks. Thanks for joining. I'll probably do these. I don't know. Every so often when I feel like it. It's too green. Look at that. Like, I can't really see. The, the light's messing everything up. Maybe this light's messing everything up. You see that? It's like electric green. You can't tell in the camera, but this is like electric green. What I'm going to do... Let's do brown and green. So we're going to do brown thread 
with uh, that green wire around it. Oh, gotta look nice. So let's take the yellow off. Find a nice brown. Oh gosh, there's like this bronzy brown. Oh wait, that's, that's a huge thread. Look how big that thread is. That's huge. I'm not gonna use that. I need a small thread. Uh, ooh, this one looks pretty. This one looks pretty good. It's a contender. Maybe this one. It's like bronzy. Uh, is this maroon? And then I got this. Yeah, we're already using green. So I think we got the contenders here. <coughs> we got this more bronzy sheen, and then this is a more matte. So we got these two, which I'm blocking the light for. Let's do that. And then we have this maroon, which actually looks. I have like no screen real estate here. Maroon, bronze, or like a matte bronze. Maybe I'll just tie one of each. They all look so good. I'm gonna try this middle one for now. I think. Oh, it's styrofoam. It's so much lighter. Okay. Yeah, let's do this one first. Thanks, Todd. I appreciate that. I'm learning, so they don't always turn out good, but every so often I get a nice one. I think most of them that I end up finishing are going to be fishy, like, fairly certain that uh, trout aren't as smart as some people like to think they are. This thread is, like, nothing. It's like micro-thread. Crazy. Okay, so, let's start with... A little baby one. I don't have very many small chronomids, so I'm going to start with a small chronomid. And we're going to do just the red. And I'll do a white bead? Yeah, let's do white. We're already kind of keeping this one muted, so might as well keep it a little muted on, on the, uh, the head, too, with white instead of that flashy silver. I think this bead will work. Gotta put it through the hook point there. Ow. Without stabbing yourself. Whew, it's almost. See the eye? It's almost too big. The bead's almost too big. That the eye's almost going through it. <laughs> okay. Oh darn it. I wonder if okay, maybe I can fix this. Hold on. Trying to line it up. I guess this will work. Oh, I see. I think that was tightening the turn. Or something. Either way, this should work. Or not. Oh, whoops. Looking at this upside down. It's an art form. Oh, it totally is an art form. So when I first learned, or when I was first interested in this, I had no idea anything about it. Like, literally, I would just buy the flies in the store, and, like, I, from what I could see, it was like, wow, this is pretty crazy. You know, they're tying these tiny little bug patterns that look really good a lot of the time. And I figured that it was like, you know, these guys have been doing this for decades and decades and de and obviously that's true for some of them but i was under the assumption it's like you really couldn't tie flies unless you'd done it for decades and decades and decades and like the reality is like it is not that hard to tie flies like it's easy to learn but hard to master and honestly that's really cool i like i've been really surprised with 
um, how easy it can be to tie these flies. <laughs> this is so small you can like barely see it. But yeah, it totally is. It's definitely one of those things where it's like easy to learn or at least easier to learn than I imagine and uh, hard to master, like no doubt. So I'm going to tie this down pretty far. Clip this excess off. And we're going to use this ridiculous green. Really, like, it's neon green. Oh, God. So that's what happens when you take the rubber band off. <laughs> it just undoes itself. Oh my goodness. So I, someone needs to figure out a better way to store this because obviously that doesn't work. It just completely unra unravels itself. Which is fine. I mean, it's not it's not ruining anything. It just makes it harder to store and whatnot. Now I have this really, like you can see, it's literally just coming off the spool. I don't know how to fix that. I guess I should have just kept the rubber band on it and then peeled it off, you know, as I went. As it stands, I don't know, this is going to be a mess for a while, but whatever. It's not the end of the world. Okay, so now we got it down here. Let's tie in this green. Tiny, tiny green wire. This is so small. I've never worked with a wire this small. It's laying down, since it's so small, it's laying down super nice. Make sure I cover it. And as it gets towards the front, I'm going to actually wrap more and more to kind of build up. And the thread just snapped. <laughs> So luckily I'm not like too close to the end of this fly, I can rescue it. I think this thread's one of those ones that's just kind of weak from being so old. <laughs> I didn't even nick it on anything, it just literally, I was, wasn't even pulling it that hard, I was just wrapping it around and just pop, it just snapped right off. Knack, I have the knack definitely, <laughs> I hope so. I used to do a bunch of artsy stuff. So maybe I'm like predisposed to s stuff like this. This is kind of like a craft. It really is like a craft. No, nothing to see here. The line uh, totally didn't break just now. It, in fact, is never been stronger. I promise. Come down here. See, there's this bump. Well, it doesn't look too bad from the camera. I do notice a bump here. I'm gonna kind of smooth it out with some more thread. Wrap this back up. Cut off. Actually, I'm gonna wrap this up even more. I want to build up a little body up here. Cut this off. Twist it off. Hackle players to the rescue. Boom. Perfect. Get that little excess off. Really want to wrap this up there. Build up that thread base right behind the head oh, or the bead. I think the bead might be too big, actually. Oh yeah, we already established that it's too big. So 
Just tons and tons of wrapping to get that nice tapered head there. Now I'm going to wrap this. I think this is probably good enough. And this is just going to be for like a segment. A segment. I don't want these to be tight. Just want these to be nice. Kind of evenly spread out as best as I can to segment this. Oh my gosh, it looks so crazy. The contrast between the brown and this toxic neon green. That's actually really neat. I have no idea if, if this looks like any sort of bug, but I think it looks cool. Oh, don't you do that. You get out of there. All right. Oh, the bead was too small. Oh, or too big. <laughs> it just popped right over the eye. Dang it. <laughs> you know what? We're going to make this work. <laughs> this is going to be a really weird coronamid. I just put barely extra pressure onto the from the wire onto the... Uh, onto that bead and it just popped right through. Dang it. This has definitely been a night of uh, interesting mishaps. But I will say there are totally, and I'm not I'm not just saying this to cover my ass, there are totally chronomids that look like this. They don't have a bead head or anything. They just have like a big ball at the end. So this is not a complete loss. And the thread just broke. It is trying to be a complete loss. It is doing its best to be a complete loss. I take back what I just said. <laughs> Jeez. I think I'm going to do one more fly tonight. I'll probably call it. It's getting kind of late. I will, I will rescue this fly as best as I can. <laughs> Are we done here? Can we can we not mess it up anymore? Don't you dare try to break. Okay, whip finish, we're done. Get this over with. Extra whip finishes. And I'm going to do one one step further. And I'm going to put some head cement on here. Which is basically just some epoxy. That helps hold everything together. Because obviously this needs it. Head cement. Got this fly head cement. Which is essentially just some runny runny or semi runny uh glue there really is nothing special to it it smells very chemically let's put it right on the tip there that's too much there we go Now that ain't coming, that ain't coming off now, hopefully, until a fish bites it. Boom. That was not planned. Comedy show.
Actually, yeah, this is our, this looks pretty good. I mean, for for all the crap that went wrong with it. Where's my little? There we go. So check this out. I mean, that doesn't look too bad. It could totally be a little bug. I'm just not gonna talk about everything that went wrong with it. The colors are like all. I'm gonna post. If anyone wants to see the actual colors, I'm going to post an Instagram of all these afterwards. Because this camera does not do the colors justice. Yep. <laughs> okay. One more. Let's do a brassy. Because I really, really like those brassies, honestly. They're, they're one of my favorite ones so far. Where did that bead go? just flew off somewhere. I'm sure the vacuum will find it. Okay, um, let's do a little brassy right here. Come on. black thread get that little thread base up there about a quarter down third down maybe actually want to do that get that copper wire dun, dun, dun. actually maybe this one will work I don't want to I have a bunch of really short ones, and I'm, not, I'm afraid that they're not going to be long enough, so I'm just going to cut a longer one. Not worried about... Not worried about uh, saving a quarter inch of copper. Actually, push this back a little more. Wrap this down. Tight turns going down. It's out of focus. Darn you, camera. I tried to get my phone to hook up as a webcam, and then it overheated. So that didn't work out. So I got stuck with the actual webcam. webcam. I'll have to mess with some settings. Maybe I can make it look better. The camera's supposed to look pretty good. But this is a pretty small subject matter, honestly. We'll see. All the way down to that bend. Let's move it back up. Get those looser segmented turns keeping a moderate amount of pressure on the copper as I turn it up because I don't want it to, to I want it to be as tight as possible Pojok fishing. Mantap pack do. I'm not sure what language that is, but welcome. I appreciate your smiley face and your thumbs up. <laughs> Alright. Peacock curl time. Got my bag of peacock curl. Get a nice... This one looks pretty poopy. Not really, actually. This one looks good. Oh yeah, this is a good one. Look at that one. Actually, not really. 
It's just some flat peacock curls, but we'll make them work. Cut that excess off at the front here. Move the thread to the eye. Gently. Oh, it just came out. What in the... Eh, why is it doing this? Grr. This peacock curl is, uh... Causing me some stress today. Extra tight on there. Now, let's... What the... I have no idea. I think the thread itself seems to be unraveling. Why? I have no idea. Don't unravel. It's trying. I'm bumping it. I think it, I think I have this too downward, so gravity is just pulling that thing down. That fixed it. Okay, after several attempts at that damn peacock curl, seems to have worked. When I don't stream, everything goes a lot smoother, it looks like, it seems like. <laughs> I guess it's more entertaining this way. Boom. Last fly of the night. I had five flies. Had some technical difficulties, some fly difficulties. Let's get a nice shot of this one with my clamps. Boom. Yeah, that light. It's like no better way to get it in a nice light. I have this. I need to get a better desk lamp. Better desk lamp is going to be something I need for sure. How's the audio levels? Like, am I too loud or am I just right? Or It's a little better light. Kind of. It kind of blows it out now. <laughs> That's way too dark. Let's see here. Maybe I can mess with some settings right here while I'm testing. So there's like exposure options, which is not really what I want. There's white balance. Let's not turn that. Oh, oh wow, look at that. I can make it look all nice and rosy. Perfect. Okay, good. Anti 
flicker. Not quite sure what that's doing. Oh, I could turn the color intensity up or down. Contrast up or down. Not brightness. I have a lot of weird options. And then there's like a yeah, that's, it's like the automatic one and that does not look good. Do not want it to be that crazy blown out. Huh. Yeah, I could play with these knobs all day, but I think there's just some actual camera limitations. Okay, well, let's see here. We tied five flies tonight. This is a nice color of range, too. I can, however, change the focus. Five flies. Get them all laid out in my hand nice. Two brassies and three chronomids. One failed brassy. I don't want to talk about that one. Oh god. That was tonight's uh, sampling. I'll probably be doing these and other stuff too, like jig tying or crappie jig tying and stuff like that. I like it. I miss streaming. I used to stream video games and it was fun to just hang out with people when I was bored, you know? So hopefully we'll do these more. We'll see. But uh, yeah. Thanks for joining, guys. Thanks, Todd. I do appreciate your, your feedback. I'm very humble. <laughs> uh, and I hope to see you guys next time. Ta-da! Alright, take care. Shutting down the stream. Good night, everyone. <laughs>